Another 100 pound class blue catfish has been put into a trophy pay lake to die. Now, if I did podcasts on 100 pound catfish that have been caught, I would be doing about one podcast every six months. It might even push it to a year. And that's a blue catfish. If I did a podcast on a flathead catfish, that would push it to 10 years. I have only seen one possible catch of a 100 pound flathead in the past like 10 years. And it was someone on a pontoon boat on Watts Bar Lake. They caught what looked like a 100 pound class fish. They released it right back into the lake instead of registering it as a new Tennessee state record. The Tennessee state record is not even over 100 pounds yet. Now, let me show you a screen grab from the video of them putting this fish in their little bitty pond right here. Basically, it took about three guys to lift this fish up and carry it over to a pond that was about the same size as my neighbor's pond when I was growing up. Now, in that pond, in my neighbor's pond, as a dumb teenager, I put in a flathead catfish that was about that big into that pond. And that tiny flathead catfish decimated the pond. It ate all the bluegill, bass, everything, all the minnows. It basically starved out everything that was in that pond, a tiny, tiny flathead. So how do you expect, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds worth of trophy catfish to survive in a small pond like that? I'm not going to tell you what trophy pay like this is or give you any kind of names or anything because I don't want to promote them. They used this fish to advertise their Labor Day tournament. So it was put in the last day of August so they could have a tournament on Labor Day. And, you know, that 100-pound fish... It's no longer a 100-pound fish. In the couple of days it took, you know, that they put it into the pond, it was probably a 90-pound fish. A month from now, 50 to 60 pounds. Two months from now, a dead fish. 110% dead. It's going to be dead within two months easily. That is why these ponds, they have to continually stock fish that they get from either themselves from our public waterways or that commercial fishermen get from our public waterways. These are public fish. This is your fish. This is my fish. They're taking and putting into their ponds to do basically gambling. And I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I might be, I, I will say yes, gambling is probably saying a little bit too much because it's, you know, a tournament is a tournament. If you're doing a tournament on like Watts Bar Lake, it's kind of the same thing. You are, you know, you're paying in for a chance to win big money if you can catch the biggest fish. Now in these, these pay ponds, they put chemicals in there to make the fish bite. So they will bite a, you know, a tennis ball. If you threw a tennis ball in there, possibly you could win a tournament with a tennis ball. In a wild lake like Watts Bar, it's completely different. You have to, you know, kind of understand the art of catfishing. The last, you know, I don't know, five years or more, I have not seen a tournament pull in a bag of catfish out of Watts Bar that's been over 100 pounds in years. And I do know that the pay lake trucks, these trophy pay lake trucks, have been seen at that waterway. So they basically emptied it out and moved on to the next. Now, I don't know if this certain pay lake that just stocked this 100 pounder is, you know, getting them illegally. Uh, a lot of them have to do that if they want to keep up with the fish because, you know, if they continue with 
their, you know, this one section of river that's close by that they're legally able to take it, take out of their quality is going to go down. And hey, they may actually be doing that because I looked on their Facebook page and scrolled through and compared to other trophy pay lakes, most of their fish are pretty small. Probably means that they may be legally getting their fish from the same lake and they're emptying out that lake. They're getting smaller and smaller. Eventually they will be forced to go somewhere else to get their fish. And they're not really advertising. Like this 100 pounder they put in, well, there was a giant live well truck there. And I guarantee you there was probably a thousand pounds worth of fish in that live well truck. They just advertised the big one to get the people to come to their tournament. And then they, you know, released the thousand to 2000 pounds that were in that truck. Now this lake actually does do the proper stocking as well. They do get some of their channel catfish from fisheries and they allow people to take those channel cats home that they catch to eat. They allow that, but if you catch a flathead or a blue in this death pond, you have to put it back. And eventually it will be leaving that pond in a wheelbarrow because it will be dead after a few months with so many in the pay leg. It's the, it's the same with every single one of them. And how, how can you tell? Just drive up to the gates and roll down your window and take a good whiff of the air. It's going to smell like dead fish. It's because they have fish dying every single day. You can smell it with every single pay leg. They have no way to stop the smell, that bad death smell. Now, if you've been to this one, you know the one I'm talking about, or to any pay lake and it smells like roses, leave a comment below. I highly doubt anybody has ever been close to a pay lake and not known that they're close to, especially a trophy pay lake. A normal one, like the one that I went to when I was a kid, the cross-eyed cricket, there was no smell there. They had a catfish pond, they had a trout pond. The catfish, almost every time I went there, they would not allow anybody to fish for the catfish because they had parasites and they didn't want those contaminated catfish, you know, they didn't want to sell them. You Whatever you caught, you kept, you paid for, you took home, you ate. The catfish ponds were closed most of the time just because of parasites. The trout ponds were open all the time and people were having trouble catching them because they were using corn and, and cane poles. I would go there with a rooster tail and just the whole pond would chase my rooster tail. So I would fill up everybody's buckets while I was there and my own using a simple rooster tail and have a nice fish fry at home of trout, farm raised trout. The catfish were also farm raised, but they put them in there. They get parasites from the others that were living there. They couldn't, they couldn't sell them. And I would imagine that it's the same for all of these other, even the trophy pay lakes. You can see the damage on the fish. When you're looking on Facebook and they're posting their little pictures of like they catch a fish and they're holding like the tail and the head, but the belly's on the ground, you see sores all over the fish most of the time. And, oh, you're going to eat channel catfish out of that same pond? Okay, yeah, no, that's that's a bad idea. Now, <laughs> I'm going to read this. I'm not going to state any names, but I posted this on a Facebook group. And, oh boy, uh, the Pay Lakers came out in droves and just, you know, went nuts on this single post. And all I did, I probably could have been more descriptive. I took the screen grab, which I just showed you guys, of the th three guys, you know, holding the net, taking this, you know, fish to their little pond. And you can see even in the picture, I can see a tree. I could take a baseball and hit that tree on the other side of the pond easily. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny pond. I put another 100 pound fish killed in a trophy pay lake. When will this stupidity stop? And uh, the majority of the comments were basically, 
Where's the 100-pound catfish? I don't see a 100-pound catfish. That's a 30-pounder. That's a 20-pounder. Blah, blah, blah. The, the Pay Lake or the Trophy Pay Lake, when they po published this, so they said the, the, the actual Trophy Pay Lake that stocked this fish said it was a 100-pound fish. Even though, even to me, it doesn't really look like a 100-pound fish. It looks more like a 60 or 70, potentially. You know, three grown men had to pick this fish up and put it in the lake. So that's got to put it above 50 pounds pretty easy. Because a 50 unless you're Catfish Dave and you can manhandle a 50-pounder with one hand, even a 50-pounder, yeah, it'd probably take a couple of people to take it and carry it to your little pay lake. But most, the majority of these comments are kind of funny because they're like, where's the 100 pounder? That's not a 100 pounder, blah, blah, blah. Now, some of the others though, oh boy. So let me pull one up here. Uh, one person said, this has happened, several said it in this way. This will stop when people start minding their own. Basically, mind your own business, you know, you shouldn't be worried about what's being put in our pay lakes, blah, blah, blah. But these are public waterways where they're getting the fish. So as soon as you take a fish out of a public park, out of a public waterway, it's all of our business now. That is, you know, that's what they do. They take the fish out of public park, public waterways starting to get tongue-tied here, and put into their little death ponds. That's So it, it is all of our business. Now, let me look here. <laughs> and, you know, there's also normal people saying, like, if you want that, go to the river. Well, it would be nice to go to the river and catch a 100-pounder if they weren't taking them and putting them in, you know, these ponds. And then you have other people's like, only way we would release that fish is into hot grease. And it's understandable that, you know, people eat these fish. I would never recommend eating anything like over 20 pounds. And there's some lakes around here that eating something that is like 5 pounds is going to be toxic beyond, you know, anything. Our waterways are pretty, you know, polluted. I will say Teleco Lake. They found the transformers that were poisoning that lake. And they removed them years ago. And, and now when they test the smaller catfish, they are finding that they're clean. So finally, we have a local lake where you can eat the catfish. Now, the bigger ones I wouldn't eat because they may have swam from Fort Loudon Lake. Fort Loudon Lake has a nickname. Fort Nasty Lake. It is a cesspool of everything. And it's 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 pretty bad. Now, 100 pounder from any lake, you need to just, you know, I would suggest releasing them so they can breed. And this is also why most states have a law where if it's over X amount of inches, you can only have one. Tennessee does. If it's over 34 inches, you can only have one, which allows a breeding population. The big ones do drop more eggs and create more fish that you can, you know, have at a fish fry. And when you hit a lake hard and take all the big catfish, the little ones start becoming hard to catch too. You know, if the Big fish aren't there. There's going to be fewer, you know, eater-sized fish. And someone said, you know, it's not going to stop anytime soon. It's all about money. And that's correct. And that is also makes it, that's why it makes it harder to deal with something like this. Because these are actual businesses. How do you shut down, you know, 50 different businesses that are basically taking our catfish from wild rivers and lakes and putting them into their ponds to die as advertising their, you know, tournaments and, and stuff like that. They're no longer really catch to eat. They're actually catch to win money. It's hard to actually tackle something like this. I, I know some actual, you know, 
the ACA, the American Catfishing Association, they're trying the political route and it's making a lot of people mad because they're not saying anything. Because politics is slow. And it will take years for them to get any kind of results. Although they have helped create some results, there is still, you know, a long ways to go. Anyway... I, I hate talking about politics, but this does go into the political realm and, you know, we're fighting against actual businesses. Well, I'm trying to, I'm just looking through here to see if I can find anything new. It's always, you know, the same thing that they're, you know, they try to say things like, you know, oh, but, you know, some people can't go to a river because it's too far away. Most of these pay lakes are within 100 miles of a river. And I did a poll a long time ago asking, is 100 miles a long distance? The majority of the votes were, no, it's not a long distance. And here on the East Coast, where these pay lakes, these trophy pay lakes are prevalent, you go 100 miles, you have a river or a lake that will have some type of trophy fish in it. But people would rather drive, you know, two minutes to a very, very smelly, bad-smelling pond to catch fish that were pulled from our public waterways. You know, I'm not going to stop on the subject, at least. Every time I see something like this, you know, I might not do it for if they post, you know, that they put in a 1,000 pounds or 9,000 pounds of fish in their lake. They do that on a weekly basis. So I'm not going to do podcast over and podcast and podcast over them simply stocking their lake. But a hundred pounder, that's rare enough that you probably won't see another podcast about me talking about a hundred pounder in for any reason for months. Just keep that in mind. 100 pound fish stalked into a tiny pond that a baby flathead could decimate. How is that fish going to stay alive? Anyway, um, feel free to leave comments below on this subject. I'm sure there's going to be good comments and there's going to be plenty of bad comments. If half of these people realize that I do this video, I probably have a hundred pay Laker comments below that are going to say either that's not a hundred pounder or mind your own business. It is what it is. I do like seeing the positive comments too. So just, you know, let me know what you think. If you have any ideas of how we can tackle this problem in a legal manner, leave them below. I, I honestly don't know how we can do anything for this other than enact, you know, more laws. And I know a lot of us, we don't want, you know, government in everything. And if you, if you're enacting a law, against a business, that's government meddling in a business. You have to ask yourself, is it worthwhile for our future generations to be able to catch trophy fish in our public waterways? If your answer is yes, that you want your children or other people's children to have a chance to catch trophy fish in a public waterway, these pay lakes need to stop. If your answer is no, you don't want your future generation to be able to catch trophy fish, then it is what it is. Leave the pay lakes open. Now, as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch this chaotic video. I really, really, really appreciate it. Also, thank you for listening as well. I will put this up on other Places where podcasts go, um, I haven't really been getting any traction on the podcast stuff, so I'm, I might end up stopping that and just keeping it 100% on YouTube, 100% YouTube podcast. I don't know. That's just stuff I got to think on myself. But um, yeah, I am kind of happy. I did actually put a client recently on three trophy-sized fish in the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program. I'd like to be able to put more people on trophy fish as long as these lakes don't, you know, keep emptying our lakes of these trophy fish. Anyway, thanks again for watching or listening. I hope to see you next time.